Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of First and Last. This is the show where I read the first chapter from a book, try and speculate on how it will end, then read the last chapter and correctly assume everything that happened in between. We had a great time doing this with A Court of Thorns and Roses, and within that same video, I was supposed to read Fourth Wing. But as another part of these videos, I'm supposed to consume one of these. And uh, I wasn't able to do two books as a result. But here today, I am going to make it up to you and read Thrace chapters. And I believe the consensus was chapter 30. Hello, goblins. Today's video is brought to you by Bright Sellers. Like many of you, I consider myself a classy man. But one of my insecurities when it came to how I presented my classy self was my lack of knowledge of wine. And that, <laughs> that's where Bright Cellars changed my life. After taking Bright Cellars' simple seven question classy quiz, I actually learned there are wines out there I do enjoy that didn't make a nice I felt like the wine world was too big and complex for me to enter. Like many of you, every time I passed by the wine aisle, I would shriek in abject terror. But Bright Cellars makes it all easy, convenient, and educational. Each box comes with cards to help you learn about every bottle you're sent. Delight guaranteed. If you don't like a bottle, your Bright Cellars concierge will replace it for you. Starting by just joining the nearly 3 million people who have already taken the classy wine cellar quiz. Then, after you're sent to you, you need to drink your wines sent from all over the world without ever having to leave your home. Then, Rate your wines to improve your future matches. You can skip or cancel anytime. I like to pair a wine with a good book, so for this Cellar Rosé, I'm feeling, I don't know, Stephen King? Yeah, you're a Stephen King wine. And my audience can get their first box a $150 value for just $55. So why don't you go ahead and follow the over 600,000 five-star reviews, click the link in the description down below, and start your wine adventure today. But seriously, thank you Bright Sellers for sponsoring today's video. Let's go ahead and get the booze a-flowin'. This is yours, tell me when. Yeah. We also Ooh. got, yeah, this is good. This is good, I really like this one. I said it's good, I've not tried it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I just like agreeing with Kayla. <laughs> I like this more than last time. And to be clear, this is not meant as me dismissing this book, putting it down in any way, shape or form, or to be taken as a serious review at all. This is simply a way for me to consume a book I don't believe I would have a lot to say about in terms of commentary in a traditional review, yet my audience has still expressed interest in me covering. Oh, it has a map in the front and back. It's just the same map, but it bookends with the map. I like that. That's, a, that's okay. What if the whole book is just entirely maps? <laughs> I, that would be my favorite book. <laughs> to Aaron, my own Captain America, through the deployments, the moves, the sunniest highs and the darkest lows, it's always been you, me, kiddo. Here's to the artist, you hold the power to shape the world. That was actually a really good dedication. I don't mind that, that was really sweet. Aww. Chapter one. <laughs> Conscription day is always the deadliest. Maybe that's why the sunrise is especially beautiful this morning, because I know it might because I know it might be my last. That's a sippy sip, that's not on the book at all. I tighten the straps of my heavy canvas rucksack and trudge up the wide staircase of the stone fortress I call home. My chest heaves with exertion, my lungs burning by the time I reach the stone corridor leading to General Soren Gale's office. This is what six months of infant, six months of intense physical training and you're out of breath going up this staircase. She's just been doing fast walking. Just <laughs> running through the fortress. And this is the first time she's had to go upstairs and she's having a hard time getting there. You're sending her to die! A familiar voice thunders through the general's 
thick wooden door and I gasp. There's only one woman on the continent foolish enough to raise her voice to the general, but she's supposed to be on the border with the eastern wing, Mira. There's a muffled response from the office and I reach for the door handle. She doesn't stand a chance, Mira shouts as I force the heavy door open and the weight of my pack shifts forward, nearly taking me down. Oh wow, so she's like a tiny person. If you're getting knocked over by a 30 pound pack, you're smaller than you by a substantial amount. Oh gosh. Yeah, yeah this person is gonna be a tiny, tiny person. I'm gonna be very uh, uh, honest with you, audience. The wine is making my mouth salivate. So this may be a moist reading of Fourth Wing. Though, from what I know of Fourth Wing, many of you are already moist, so this is fine. <laughs> that one was for Kayla. Curse the sickness that nearly killed her while she was pregnant with me. Or the library dad made my second home once she'd been stationed here at Bathgoth as an instructor, and he was a scribe. I love that library, I counter. It's been more than a year since his heart finally failed, and the archives are still the only place that feels like home, and the giant forests, the only place where I still feel my father's presence. Oh, well, I said forest, not fortress, but that was really sweet. I was so confused for a second. I'm like, are we out? The woods? Are we out of the woods? Wait, that's not the Taylor Swift lyrics. Yeah, it is. Oh, it is? I'm an official Swifty baby. I won't be able to acknowledge you for the first. I won't be able to acknowledge you. That's a sippy sip. I won't be able to acknowledge you for the next three years, she says, sitting back in the edge of her desk. Since, as commanding general of the Basgath, I'll be your far superior. I know. It's the least of my concerns, considering she barely acknowledged me now. So she's not going to give preferential treatment for her daughters while not writing up her older daughter for abandoning her post to come make an argument here today. You're full of shit, ma'am. She's fracking efficient, I'll give you that, Mira mutters before turning my way, her gaze passing over me in open assessment. I was hoping I'd be able to talk her out of it. You were never meant for the writer's quadrant. Man, she does just put Violet down, Jesus. So you've mentioned, I lift my brow repeatedly. Sorry, she winces, dropping to the ground and emptying her pack. What are you doing? What Brennan did for me, she says softly, and grief lodges in my throat. Can you use a sword? I shake my head, too heavy. I'm pretty quick with daggers though. There is one thing in media I dislike more when it comes to swords than back scabbards. Back scabbards are already stupid because if you've ever tried to pull a sword out of a back scabbard, guess what? Doesn't work, you would die. But the one thing that bothers me more is the misconception that everyone should know because everyone in their life has picked up a sword at some point. Swords aren't that heavy. They're really not. I did fencing for years and then took broadsword. This would be considered a pretty standard sword in terms of weight. It's not that heavy, is it? One hand. Blah, blah. This is just weird sexism that has infiltrated our whole media as an excuse not to give women swords. <laughs> give women swords. Exactly, because it's what you're doing going into battle. The combination of leather and fabric I don't recognize covers me from collarbone to just below my waist, wrapping over my breasts and crossing up and over my shoulders. I finger the hidden sheath sewn diagonally across along my ribs for your daggers. I only have four. I grab them from the pile on the floor. You'll earn more. I slide my weapons into the sheaths as though my ribs themselves have become weapons. The, the design is ingenious. That's a sip a sip. I barely recognize, I barely, that's a sip a sip. I barely reckon myself. Don't you scoff at me. Da how doth you scoff at me? I barely reckon myself. The problem is the more sippy sips that happen, the more sippy sips that will occur. I barely recognize myself in the mirror. I look like a rider. I feel like a scribe. I happen to know a writer whose powers can make big things very small. A devious smile plays across her lip. And smaller things much bigger? That wasn't a question in the book, but... Wait. Her sister Mira is... She has to be joking, but she's joking about using dragon magic to make giant... Well, I... 
<laughs> Wait, what? No. That, I roll my eyes. Mira's always been more vocal about her men than I have. She, no, she's f***ing serious. I have been about all two of them. I mean, how much bigger? She laughs, then tugs her braid. Head forward. You should- Wait, no, 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 no. She's not joking. Wait. Mira has genuinely been hooking up with a guy and been like, no, 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 I'm sorry, that's not gonna do it. Come talk to my dragon real quick. And then her dragon, <laughs> her dragon on a Tuesday is like chilling in his little dragon den. Mira comes in and is like, hey, this guy, not doing it for me. Would you mind? And the dragon has to be like, ah, yeah, bibbity bobbity schlong. <laughs> Is it permanent? This might be my actual favorite book. Don't even worry about taking it out of context. That's hilarious. This has dragon magic. I'd read that spinoff. I don't think it's a spinoff. <laughs> it's the book. She's gonna get glowing <laughs> tattoos. There's gonna be glowing tattoos. I am magic tattoos. Just put glowing tattoos in your character if you want them to have glowing tattoos. It doesn't need to come from dragon or something, all right? You can just have a glowing tattoo, that's fine. But I'm assuming she's gonna like dragon at some point. I don't know, it's fourth wing, let's see. <laughs> don't you laugh, I'm drunk. My hair is the only thing about me that's perfectly healthy. Cutting it would feel like I'm punishing my body for finally doing something well, and it's not like I feel like I need to hide who I am. So she's just, not healthy. I'm now less on her mom's side. She is 90 pounds, can't run up a flight of stairs. Oh, I looked it up, sorry. Uh, Fourth Wing will never explicitly say it, but Violet has what's called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, EDS, a chronic condition that affects the body's connective tissue. So basically her bones pop out of place a lot and she's constantly in pain. She's Samuel L. Jackson from the movie Unbreakable. I don't know where I left off. Let's just pick up here. I look behind us where it seems hundreds have filled with the span of minutes. Maybe I should let them go first. I whisper as panic fists my heart. That is graphic. This is graphic imagery. What the hell am I doing? No, Mira answers. No, that was that was actually a line in the book. I wasn't saying what the hell am I doing in this moment where I'm reading a book for a bunch of weirdos online that has a whole lot of sex in it. I, that was a line of dialogue in the book. I want to clarify. I'm sorry, I'm still. Stuck I know on exactly what I'm doing, Kayla. <laughs> I look around the pair toward the roll keeping desk and my eyes widen. Is he? I whisper, Amira glances and mutters a curse. A separatist kid? Yep. See that shimmering mark that starts at the top of his wrist? It's a relic from the rebellion. I lift my eyebrows in surprise. The only relics I've ever heard are when a dragon uses magic to mark the skin of their bonded rider. But those relics are symbols of honor and power and generally in the shape of the dragon who gifted them. These marks are swirls and slashes that feel more like a warning than a claiming. A dragon did that, I whisper, she nods. Mom says General Melgren's dragon did it to all of them when he executed their parents, but she wasn't exactly open to further discussion on the topic. Nothing like punishing the kids to deter- We have magic tattoos! I called it! We got magic tattoos. Every single one's got it. You can't say we don't. Gifted from a dragon, Daniel Wright, one billion times, the world wrong, infinity times. I know literature. All right, let's keep reading. Um, <laughs> it's a book, who cares? All right, um, I look around. It's fine. It's a mass market book that's been printed to a Bergillion people, and it's okay, I Just, promise. Well, can we mourn the tree? Oh, f that tree. What is Zayden doing here? All the children of the leaders were conscripted as punishment for their parents' crimes, Mira whispered as she shuffled sideways, moving the line. Mom told me they never expected Royden to make it past the parapet. Then they, why? Was he like not good at running in a straight line? Did they see him and they're <laughs> like, hey kid. <laughs> Say what you will about Zayden. Can't walk a straight line. Noted, I nod. Next, a voice calls from behind the wooden table that bears the rolls of Rider's Quadrant. The marker, marked right, that's a sippy sip. I started, I, I'm, I, I have to start being careful and selective about what portions of the book I read because the more I read, the more I drink and we are getting in dangerous territory. So this whole page is just gonna go bye bye. I feel like I've been waiting my entire life for this day. Dylan shifts his pack and his back. 
Can you believe we actually get to do this? It's a dream come true. I love that there's one random guy named Dylan here who's just like all amped about it. He's like, this is great. Military dystopia, let's go. Um, the third turns in my direction and my heart simply stops. He's tall with windblown black hair and black brows. And when he folds his arms across his torso, the muscle in his chest and arms ripple. Oh! Ripple My boy got ripples! <laughs> like a Lay's chip! Oh yeah, in this moment where people are, like dead kids in front of you have fallen in this pit. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You all see how hot this guy is? There's like a pile of corpses at her feet. <laughs> and she's just like, I could be one of those, but you know what? My last thought is going to be of his rippling abs. A scream renders the air and Renard and I both jerk our attention to the parapet just in time to see Dylan slip. I knew Dylan is in trouble, couldn't make it. <laughs> He's very much in trouble right now. He's so in trouble. Dylan! He's in trouble. Oh gods, my hand flies to my mouth, the cover of my mouth, but he loses his grip on the water slick stone and falls, disappearing from view. The wind and rain steal and any sound his body might make in the valley below. They steal the sound of my muffled cry too. Zayden never takes his eyes from me, watching silently while I look. Can't interpret, but I bring us a sippy sip and gaze back to his. Why would I waste my energy killing you when I the parapet will do it for me? It will Wicked smile curves his lips. Your turn. So clearly she's gonna end up sleeping with Zayden. Like, no, it's not even a question. She's bonded with a dragon at this point. She's now having flirtatious times with Zayden. There's been one throwaway sex scene with some random character we don't care about. And her mother is just not coming to play because she's been hyper-focused on her training. Her mother's gonna come into play later. And Zayden and her are gonna have a conflict that could be resolved with like four seconds of communication. Also, Dylan, not dead. Dylan survived his journey into the, the, the death down place. And Dylan is trying to now lead a rebellion with some dragons who were deemed not good enough to overthrow this unjust institution of dragon superiorship. And now we're gonna watch as the rest of the story unfolds this rebellion with Dillian, D Dillian. And Dillian's leading a rebellion to overtake the unjust rulership. And we find out that the invading enemies are actually the good guys because this <laughs> empire has been sending out riders and dragons to do all kinds of terrible damage, with which Mira is a part of. Mira is a part of the problem. That's one of the conflicts internally for Violet is finding out that her sister is the bad guy. Chapter 14. Zayden, for the first time, the sight of him fills my chest with hope. Yeah, we're getting there. He won't let this happen. He might hate me, but he's a wing leader. He can't just watch them kill a dragon. Oh, we're at a dragon killing scene. But I know the rules proper, probably better than any, that's a sippy sip right there. You're really going to do this? I asked Ty, Ty name. attack a squad mate. Squads don't mean shite today. Oh, they've made squads. They say that you could attack and kill someone at any time, but you have a squad. So do you not kill your squad or do you keep, kill your squad? Keep up, Kayla. They're clearly not in basic training anymore. We've graduated. We're now ah, seniors. Yeah, okay, clearly. Sorry. We're going to read the story to Boblin. Rage contorts his features and he moves to strike. I try to flick my knife at him, but it slips from my blood-soaked hand and lands with a thud in the grass several feet away. And I know my bravado won't be enough to save me now. My arm is shot, my leg is shot, but at least I made Jack Barlow run away before I died. At the last thought, it's that's not a bad one. Too late, I don't have any more wine. Just as Tannen reaches up, just two hands of sword, preparing to killing blow, I catch a glimpse of movement to my right. It's Zayden, and the rules be damned. He steps forward as though he intends to stop Tannen's from killing me. I barely have a moment to register surprise that Zayden would ever save me for any reason when a gust of wind slams into my back and I stumble forward into a destroyed ankle, flinging my arms out to keep my balance and grimacing at the shooting pain. Tenon's mouth hangs open and he staggers backward, his head tilting so far back it's nearly perpendicular to his torso. Is he a human or To is endorse he a responsible drinking from now on when I need a sippy sip, it's water body as Tenen breaks into a screaming run, fleeing from for the trees as a sip. Drink responsibly. 
A big dragon showed up and saved the day. I don't know what's Delia. Is she gonna get two dragons? Fire shoots across the field, blasting heat against the side of my face and incinerating everything that's passed, including Tynan. This dragon just murdered everyone attacking her. There was like a fight, a dragon showed up. I have no idea why. And was just like, you're all dead. <laughs> there you go, Violet. Oh, hi, Boblin's here. He will kill you if given the same chance. I glanced down at Orwin, still unconscious in the grass beside my feet. It's not like I can argue that astute assessment. Well, that's a statement on his character, not mine. That's a great response. In a field of trash, I'm finding diamonds. I can't just leave it, I say. What if Orin wakes up or Jack can, comes back? Sorry, Bob Lee needs a key. Okay. The golden one bends down, flexing its legs, and then launches into the sky, its golden wings catching the sun as it flies off, skimming the tops of the trees. Ugh, so it can fly. That would have been nice to know 20 minutes ago. I'm s What is happening? <laughs> I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Okay, hold up. I was also recommended to read chapter 30. His body goes rigid for one beat, two, and then he spins us impossibly fast, putting his back against the door, jostling the frame. Whoa, he captures my wrists in one hand and holds them prisoner above my head. Oh, we're in the middle of sex. There's a boner scene. Oh, it's Satan! It's Satan! I we told you! No, it would be Satan! I told you he was the reason! <laughs> Satan groans against my mouth. The plea in his tone floods my veins with a whole different form of power. Knowing he's just as affected by our attraction as I am is a rush. This isn't what you want. It's exactly what I want, I counter. I want to replace the anger with lust, the death of the day. Oh, it's so much hotter when like family members have died leading up to it. Yeah, that's hot. That's so hot. And I know he's capable of delivering all that and more. You said to do whatever I need. I arch my back, pressing my tips of my breast against his chest. His breath changes and there's a war in his eyes that I'm determined to win. It's time to stop dancing around this unbearable tension and break it. I can see the infamous control of his hovering at the edge, balancing precariously on the point of a knife. All he needs is one little push, and I'm about to shamelessly shove. Good, I tilt my head up to his and draw his bottom lip between mine, sucking before gently nipping him with my teeth because I only want you, Zayden. I'm so drunk. All right, let's try and read. Gods, he says against my throat, and then we're moving. Wood scrapes the floor and crashes for my the desk. My ankles fall from the small of his back, and he leans over me, spreading his fingers through my hair at the nape of my neck, and he takes my mouth again. I kiss him back with hunger. I've only known with him. My hands fly back to brace my weight, knocking anything and everything out of my way, sending whatever careening to the floor. The clock stops ticking. This is a pretty good sex scene. I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty all right. The use of, it's better than Sarah J Mass being like it roved over her. That's, come on. She hasn't said the word roved. I'm gonna give her that. He's the worst kind of addiction. Dangerous and impossible to sate. That's good. That's a good sex description. That is how I want him to say my name from now on. Just like that. He glides the fabric of my underwear across my, oh, I can't say that on YouTube. We're getting too spicy for YouTube. He captures my mouth again. It's a hungry assault. His tongue sliding against mine as he finger strokes me through the fabric. Expertly, oh, expertly. Zayden's good. I mean, come on, he's a bad boy, rebellion child. Like, obviously, the guy's experienced. He's gonna be pretty darn good. Um, I'm skipping over a whole bunch of stuff I can't read on YouTube. His voice is ragged against my mouth. If I get my hands on you, really honestly get my hands on you, I don't know if I'll be able to stop. Oh. I'll be late to D&D &D today, there's sex! You're so effing hot. His voice drops, sounding like it's been scraped over coals. It might damn us both, but I can't wait to feel you. God damn! First wave of my orgasm washing over me, releasing that tight coil of tension in a burst of sparks at the edge of my vision, breaking me into a million scattered stars. Lightning strikes outside my window, flashing light that threw the room again and again. You know what you're saying, he asks as he shoves the fabric and any cloth beneath past his hips, freeing his thick length of sausage. This is getting detailed. I'm about to understand Zayden's 
I've got you, Violet, he promises, his breath ragged pants against my lips. Let it out. Lightning wisps through me, flashing so bright that my eyes slam shut. Heat flares above me as thunder cracks immediately, and I smell smoke. Zayden powerful fills room, eclipses what light we had, and the curtain falls as we... Oh, we're getting magic involved, I think. I'm too drunk to really comprehend what's happening aside from sex. I want to f*** Zayden at this point. Jesus. That's right, you thirsty. You took the joke. I was gonna look at the camera and say I'm thirsty, but you you robbed me! I thought you did the f the first night Terran channeled power into you, but I wasn't sure, so I didn't really say anything. Really, I blink, thinking back, but my brain is full of pleasant dull hum as sleep fights to pull me under. When my eyes drift shut, my arms tighten around me as he tucks me closer, the back of my thighs pressed tight against his pants, as I start to drift off. He's still wearing pants the first time you kissed me. <laughs> I have no context for any of that. I'm None just of it. I'm just assuming it was kind of sweet. We're going to the last chunk here. Um, I'm predicting after her romance with Zayden, a plot was uncovered where Zayden was actually working to overthrow the government and then she had a crisis of loyalty where she was like, oh no, I don't know. Am I loyal to Zayden or my terrible mother and sister? And it turns out, Loyal to Zayden, because the government, bad, all along, not good. And so, Dylan's rebellion gets tied in. That's right, I didn't forget about that. And now Dylan, Zayden, and Violet are working together with her big black dragon that she was never able to come back from, <laughs> jokes, to then overthrow the government that had uniforms done up by... Hugo Boss, if you understand what I'm trying to say, which that government deserves to be overthrown, because it's bad. An hour later, I'm bathed and impatient as I wait outside my room in a fresh set of leathers with Bodhi! I don't know who Bodhi is, but I assume Bodhi, pretty chill. Who's doing his best to lighten my mood, just like he always does, when the door opens and Violet stands there. We're in Zayden's perspective. Gods, I want to haul her into my arms and love her until she forgets everything except how good we are together. But I'm sure that's the last thing she'll ever want again. Come back again, she says softly as my heart lurches. As long as you've invited me, I walk in, loathing the distrust in her eyes. Ooh, there's still conflict, but sexual tension. I'm, you know what? There may be special magic tattoos. There may be all kinds of stuff that I'm judging fourth wing right now for being predictable on. But what I will say... I've actually yet to have it confirmed that we're following Zayden's perspective. I don't know that for sure. <laughs> but I will say, if it's Zayden we're following right now, I respect it having one in love interest from beginning to end. And it's hopefully developed and they've had, like, actual chemistry. Right. I swallow hard. I think after all you've seen, the question I have to ask before I tell you everything is pretty simple. Are you in? Are you willing to fight with us? I'm right! I'm so right! I called it, the rebellion is back on, and Violet's joining, because her mom's terrible and her sister's not much better. I'm in, she nods. Relief surges through me in a rush, more powerful than anything I could channel from s <clears throat> his dragon, and I reach for her. I'm so sorry I had to keep my words die on my tongue as she steps back, avoiding me. Not happening. A word of hurt flashes in those hazel eyes, and I fracking wither. Just because I believe you and I'm willing to fight with you doesn't mean I'll trust you with my heart again. There's been, oh. there's been conflict. Oh. There's been loving conflict. No, Violet, trust him. He's a good man. Oh, it's the last page, it's the last page. I've risked it all by tr just bringing her here instead of taking her body back to back up. I'll tell you anything you want to know and everything you don't. Dude, okay, Zayn. Zayden. Zayden, I don't <laughs> care. She may be the love of your life, but political causes, are bigger than you. And I'm going to give you advice from one fictional character to another. Never take your heart over the greater good for the people. And I feel like that's what you're doing. That's a mistake. And if your potential partner can't respect that, it's not a relationship you wanna be in. If Kayla came to me and was like, I'm working for the French Revolution, there's stuff I can't tell you, I'd be like, I get it. I'm assuming we're in like 1930s I was gonna say France. Time travel? Wait, really was the French Revolution? I don't know when the French, whenever the French Revolution. Was. What a deep cut. 
cut there. Okay. I would rather lose the entire war than live without you. And if that means I have to prove myself over and over, then I'll do it. You gave me your heart and I'm keeping it. She already owns mine, even if she doesn't realize it. Her eyes widen, as if finally seeing the resolve in mine. It's time she knew everything. Knowing Violet, she won't stay tucked away, safe behind <laughs> walls, especially not now that she knows just how corrupt those walls are. I called everything. I am a fourth wing whisperer. The only thing I didn't see is dragon boning, but I think it happened in the page at some point. You have about 20 seconds to ask a question if I know him. She blinks. I'm still hoping that massive at, at this, I don't know, was really about the war games. Do you think there's any chance we just happened to end up in the middle of a wyvern attack at that outpost? That definitely wasn't an accident, little sister. He says from the doorway. Oh, there's... What? Is her brother back? I sigh and move to the side, watching Violet's eyes widen as she sees him standing in the doorway. I told you I knew better poison masters, I tell her softly. You weren't healed, you were mended. Brennan? She stares at her brother in open mouth shock. Brennan just grins and opens his arms. Welcome to the revolution, Violet. What is happening? No, no. Fourth wing landed that sh Okay, I'm not saying it's a good book, but for just the chapters I read, whoa, okay, what? Okay, let me fill in the blanks. She had this whole thing, got talked in the revolution. There are dark moments and corridors in the schoolyard where she slowly realizes she's working for the fascists and they're the bad guys because fascists are always the bad guys. She slowly realizes Zayden's working from the inside out. She goes with him. She has a couple fun other romps with other people, but at the end of the day, she ends up with the person she belongs with. That's Zayden after getting her big black dragon. At the end of the day, it turns out Brennan, he went through this whole journey as well, realized the fascism angle and also join the revolution. Zayden's the good guy. And now book two is going to be the rebellion. I'm here for it. And I'm absolutely doing the same video for Bort book. I almost said it all so well. That's a sippy sip. Bort two. I'm doing this again for book two and I'm so pumped. This has been first and last. I got to go play D&D. &D. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing if you chose to. And also check out our War of the Worlds Kickstarter, which is currently smashing its stretch goals. I love you all. We love Bright Sellers. We love Bright Sellers. Thank you for sponsoring this video. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. And Jillian, feel free to edit this. I, I'm, I, I want the editing style to this video to be a white trash retelling. Keep this in for the audience as well so they understand that was your goal as an editor. And we can all judge how you've done at the end. I'm very excited for that in the comments down below.